students who are out here this morning. Thank you for being here with all of us today. I want to acknowledge our elected officials who are uh, with me, of course, our governor, Martin O'Malley, our lieutenant governor, uh, Anthony Brown. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge Delegate Melvin Stukes, Senator Verna Jones-Rodwell, Delegate Kiefer Mitchell. I want to also acknowledge, if I miss any... It, of course, Congressman uh, Elijah Cummings, who's going to be speaking as well. So I, I hope if I missed an elected official, just kick me in. I'll get him in later. I also want to, to thank and uh, acknowledge Reverend Alvin Hathaway for being here. I want to thank, again, the Lockerman Bundy uh, students. I want to thank Mary Ann Lestani. And uh, where's County Executive Ullman? Right, here. Okay. right behind me. You took off your jacket from earlier. I didn't see you. And it, it is just a tiny bit. Well, we're not complaining. It could be raining. Praise God. Did I mention? I forgot you. It's Councilman Pete Welch. I forgot you. Councilman Nick Mosby. Uh, Congressman Sarvays. Good to see you. As well as uh, Delegate Sean Tarrant. Thank you all for being here. I also want to thank our. Um, over 1,000 uh, friends of uh, transportation. I want to thank uh, CMTA and CPHA and BMC and IBEW. Can you give y'all your yourselves a hand for being out here in this heat today? You know, the press, the residents, elected officials uh, in the D.C. area, you know, they've been having this battle between Baltimore and D.C. Not, I mean, we know very clearly. No offense to Lieutenant Governor, who, rep, who's, you know, lives in that D.C. suburb. But we all know where is he today, right? Yeah. Right behind you, man. <laughs> you know, but they've been saying that Baltimore is not organized, and today is about showing the state that the city of Baltimore wants the red line, and we're organized too. Building an integrated, world-class transit system like the red line will create better access to jobs and give Baltimore residents more options to get from home to jobs. Uh, also, the red, light, the red line means creating jobs, 4,500 construction jobs, and about 200 permanent jobs. It will finally connect the metro, light rail, buses, and mark to create the most comprehensive transportation system Baltimore has ever seen. And these young people, these students who are here with us today, deserve nothing less for their futures. It's fine. It will finally create a regional transportation system by connecting two major job centers in two major jurisdictions, Medicare, Medicaid in uh, West Baltimore County to Bayview in East Baltimore City. The red line will link residents with uh, more access to jobs by providing a convenient, efficient way to crisscross the region without the burden of driving and with the, without the burden of uh, long commutes. It will give residents the ability to spend more time with their families, by reducing the commute times and avoiding the gridlock to get downtown. It has the ability to transform neighborhoods that have long suffered from disinvestment. So better transportation option is the key to unlocking Baltimore's potential. And it will help us to grow our population and build better lives for our current city residents. So we stand here united for a better Baltimore, a Baltimore with a world-class transit system. And I want to thank our governor, Martin O'Malley. I said in, in my comments that he's certainly putting his money where his mouth is. He knows that a healthy Maryland has to have a healthy Baltimore. And for Baltimore to be healthy today and in the future, it means that we have to be, we don't, we, we need a world-class port. We have a world-class port. We have world-class arts and entertainment and world-class kids and schools. But what about transportation? In order to be a world-class city, for tomorrow, we have to have world-class transportation, and that's what we're here to recognize today, to uh, thank the governor, lieutenant governor, and all who helped participate to make this incredible investment in our infrastructure possible. So with that, I would like to bring the partner to Baltimore, our governor, Martin O'Malley. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thanks very, very much, Mayor. Let's give it up for Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Can we hear a big cheer from Mary Winnergan Elementary? 
A big cheer from Lockerman Monday Elementary. A big cheer for Baltimore's future all together. It is wonderful to be with all of you. I want to thank the young people of Baltimore City Public Schools for bringing the good weather along with you. And you guys have been so patient for us. This is a big announcement because today we're announcing major investments that will create jobs and also improve the connections between all of Baltimore's neighborhoods, Baltimore's people, make it easier for people to get to work and from work, from home to church. It's all about the investments we make together. And today, those investments and the investments we make in transportation infrastructure to create jobs to move beyond the recession and actually into a better tomorrow for Baltimore. You will be hearing from a number of the other people uh, who are here around the podium. So let me be as condensed as I can possibly be in these remarks. Uh, we have heard our president say uh, many times that in order for us to create jobs as a country, we must pull together the consensus to educate, to innovate, and to rebuild. And that's why these transportation investments are so very important for strengthening our middle class, creating more opportunities, and creating a better tomorrow with more jobs for the people of our state. And um, I want to compliment the mayor on the way here. I mean, the city continues to look cleaner and cleaner. I just came from a, another neighborhood up at White Lock where years ago nobody would be out gardening in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. And now uh, that part of our city is doing better and it's growing cleaner, growing smarter, growing greener. And these mass transit investments, like the investments we make in the red line, are a big important part of what it's going to take to create a smarter, cleaner, greener future. So all together, the $1.5 billion that we're announcing today that will be invested across the region will support 13,000 jobs in the years ahead. So that $689 million of that will go to the red line, including $519 million for construction. Big round of applause. And I want to thank the hardworking men and women of organized labor, IBEW, the operating engineers, and all the other trades who are here represented. I want to thank uh, Pierce Flanagan and, uh, and the great work of all the uh, men and women of, of that terrific company and all the hardworking people that make our country and make our state go. Two hundred, number two, 246 million will go to upgrade rail cars and signal systems throughout the Baltimore transit system. 29 million will go to improve safety and congestion on 695 near Old uh, Harford Road. And those are in addition to the announcements we've made in the past few months, like the widening of sections of the Baltimore Beltway, US 29, and the Mark commuter rail improvements in case you did not catch it, we are going to be adding a number of additional double-decker cars so that commuters between the Baltimore and the Washington area can actually have a better commute and a better shot at being able to uh, sit down for a stretch of that ride. And in May, we are going to begin Mark Weekend Service on the Penn Line, and that will begin... And uh, we can announce that that weekend service will start on December 7th. So all of these are part of the better results that we're able to achieve if we're uh, willing to make better choices. And the next gentleman that I have the honor to introduce has been our lieutenant governor for these last seven years. He served as the highest ranking elected official uh, in uh, uh, to have served a tour of duty in Iraq. Uh, you're going to be hearing from Congressman Cummings and Congressman Sarbanes who do great work because without the federal government with us, we wouldn't be able to do these things. And Congressman Cummings and Congressman Sarbanes are working hard every day in our federal government along with Senators Cardin and, and Senator Mikulski. But this next gentleman has been at my side in your state house. He is Lieutenant Governor, and he, before that he served in the House of Delegates. He hails from Prince George's County, not so very far away from here. And he's a person who understands that there is no progress without jobs, and that if we make better investments, we'll be able to create more jobs. Please welcome a great friend to Baltimore and to the great leader for our entire state, Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown. Yay! Thank you, thank you, Governor.
Thank you, Governor O'Malley. And before I start, uh, let me uh, uh, thank you for your leadership, uh, for uh, leading us in making uh, tough and uh, courageous uh, decisions uh, in order to ensure that Maryland had the resources to the Transportation Infrastructure Investment Act to invest in the infrastructure projects that we're announcing today. So thank you, uh, uh, Governor O'Malley, for your friendship uh, and uh, your uh, leadership. I also want to say to my good friend, uh, the mayor, uh, she knows that wherever I go, whether I'm here in Baltimore, whether I'm in Prince George's County or anyone else, anywhere else around the state, uh, that I declare that Baltimore City is our city. If you're a Marylander, uh, then uh, you ought to believe that to be the case, that Maryland uh, is, Baltimore City is Maryland's city. Whether you live, work, or raise a family uh, in Baltimore or not, I believe the success of our state is so intertwined uh, with the success of Baltimore City, and that's why I'm excited uh, to announce with the governor and with our uh, partners the investments that we're making, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, here in Baltimore City. It's very appropriate to have our young people here today, our students. I love your signs. Uh, red line means business and jobs, and that's true for all infrastructure. Uh, and that also includes the $1.1 billion that we're investing in Baltimore City schools uh, that will not only create jobs, but make sure that you all get the education that you need in top flight facilities to compete to compete for the jobs of today and tomorrow. So thank you for being here and reminding us young people uh, about why we're doing uh, what we do. Uh, seven years ago, uh, the governor and I, along with uh, our partners, uh, committed to taking some of the, our most difficult and pressing challenges and facing them head on. And there's no doubt that throughout Maryland, uh, and it's true here in the Baltimore uh, region as well, that addressing our transportation needs is certainly one of our most pressing uh, and difficult challenges that we face uh, as a state. Uh, in fact, in terms of traffic, uh, Maryland is one of uh, the most congested states uh, in the country, and it costs Marylanders both time and money uh, to sit in traffic, uh, around $2,000 a year for commuters uh, in the Baltimore and Washington uh, area. So inaction was not an option. Uh, it would, in fact, cost Marylanders more if we did nothing uh, than, than uh, we are uh, asking them to make uh, by making these investments in infrastructure. Uh, as we continue to grow and thrive and as we continue to be a place where people want to live, uh, work, uh, and raise a family, we must remain committed to building a 21st uh, century uh, infrastructure that will support a, a 21st century economy. And we will do it uh, by investing in public transportation, uh, which is going to be an important part of Maryland's future. Uh, we've committed to doubling transportation ridership uh, in Maryland by the end of 2020, and working together, we are making significant progress uh, towards that goal, including an almost 18 percent uh, increase in overall average uh, weekday ridership so far. Uh, but expanding Mark service, uh, investing an additional $12 million in the Charm City Circulator, and continuing to pursue the red line are an essential part of meeting that goal and supporting our growing economy. Uh, and even as we commit to strengthening and improving our public transportation, we're continuing to invest in much needed road projects in growing communities uh, throughout our state. And this includes communities uh, where we've created thousands of jobs through the base realignment and closure program. By working together, we've welcomed new uh, military families uh, to our state. Uh, in great places to live, including here in, in Baltimore City, and we welcome those families and our veterans as they call Maryland home. The combined $72 million investment that we're making near Fort Meade and Aberdeen Proving Ground will ensure that these families can spend less time stuck in traffic and more time either on the job or at home with their loved ones. And as we look to the future, these investments will help us create more jobs and attract even more families to Baltimore, which I know is a major goal of the mayor uh, and the city council. Uh, these projects aren't just about one community. Uh, they're about connecting communities to one another throughout Maryland. And that was made possible certainly by our partnership with Speaker Mike Bush uh, and members of the General Assembly who included funding uh, to study the addition of a fourth eastbound lane on Route 50 over the Severn River Bridge, an expansion that could eliminate the long waits not only for beachgoers, but those who commute each and every day. Uh, Maryland's future and our future economic competitiveness is going to require a modern infrastructure and transportation network, a network that can serve as a foundation for our continued growth as we continue to support our small businesses, expand opportunities for more Marylanders, 
uh, build on our successes and build a better Maryland for more Marylanders. Thank you. And it's now, it is now my tremendous pleasure to call to the podium a, a true friend, a, a friend, a partner uh, who fights every day, not only for Marylanders, uh, but for all Americans, uh, without whom we could not be making the announcements that we make today or make the progress that we have been making over the years, my good friend, Congressman Elijah Cummings. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, first of all, good afternoon to all of you. Um, it is uh, it's truly an honor to be here. And uh, Madam Mayor, I want to thank you for your vision. Uh, this is a definitely a federal, state, and local effort. And I want to thank our city council for all that they have done to help us in this process. And I also want to thank the governor um, and the lieutenant governor and the members of the legislature. We would not be here if they did not have a vision as to how to get this done and get the money for it and then have the audacity to do it. Sometimes leadership can be very difficult. You can come under a lot of criticism, but you gotta bold, be bold enough to do what you believe is right. And there is absolutely no question that our state legislature and our governor and lieutenant governor stood up when I'm sure in many states they would have never done what was done in the last session to make sure our transportations go forward, transportation projects go forward. Would you give them a hand, please? Hey, one of them signs. This is what this is all about. This is what this is all about. Not long ago, I was at the, uh, at the Howard University graduation. When I graduated in 1973, I vowed that I would go back to every Howard University graduation because I wanted to get the thrill of seeing young people march into the future. And at the last graduation, uh, a young lady got up, the president of the class, and she said something that made me think about all of this, Madam Mayor. She said, I want you to go out there. She was talking to her fellow students, graduates. She says, I want you to go out there and create a liberated future. Go out there and create a liberated future, Hathaway. And when I think about what we are doing today, it's about liberation. It's giving people the freedom to move. See, it's one thing to have opportunity, but if you can't get there, that's a problem. It's giving them an opportunity to have convenience. This whole thing with the mark line extension over the weekends is so very, very important. It frees people to live the best lives that they can. That's what this is all about. It frees people to get jobs. Kathy P. will tell you we, bat, we, we do everything in our power, the mayor and all of the folks behind us, be, behind me, trying to figure out how to get people jobs. Oldman out in Howard County, how do we get people jobs? Well, this is real. People can talk a good game, but this is going to happen. And that is so significant. It gives people, it liberates them, it liberates them to have dignity. Dignity. People need to work. People need jobs. People need to be able to provide for their families with a living wage. That's what this is all about. And I want to thank all of our partners, all the unions. I want to thank Reverend Halfway and all the folks that have been working with you to make sure that folk are properly trained. Hello, trained to take on responsibility and do these jobs. That is so important. It's about liberation, liberating us to be all that God meant for us to be. And so I want to thank all of you, all the partners. I know the state people have worked hard. Madam Mayor, I want to thank you so much for bringing in uh, the community partners and making sure that they were a part of the process uh, in planning uh, the red line. And, and, and a meaningful, and giving them a meaningful role. And so I really appreciate that because, again, you gave them the liberty to be able to, 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 to chart out their own future. And so it gives me great honor to thank all of you and all of our partners and to introduce my friend and one who I, I we are so blessed in Maryland to have a wonderful, a wonderful delegation 
to the Congress of the United States of America. And one of my best friends in the Congress, who I love working with every day, and who is consistently fighting for our city and for our region, Congressman John Sarbanes. Yeah. Thank you all. I'm glad to be here. Let's give another round of applause to somebody who's one of the premier advocates in the country for cities, for people, for progress, Elijah Cummings. We're blessed to have him here in Baltimore City, and I'm blessed to be able to serve with him. Uh, to Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake and the city council here in Baltimore and the legislators that represent Baltimore, I'm proud to be one of the uh, three members of the Maryland delegation, congressional delegation that represents uh, Baltimore City. And, and Madam Mayor, we just love Baltimore City. We love this city. We love it for its energy. We love it for its people. We love it for its progress. It's becoming a model of great things across the country. We thank the governor for his tremendous support of the city uh, and his investment uh, in the state of Maryland. I was looking in the paper this morning. I was trying to pick out you know, which of these dozens of projects that are being covered by the funding I should refer to today, but the, really the list is too long. This is a, a tremendous statement by the governor, by the state of Maryland, by all of the partners who are here today about investing in the future of the country. You know, uh, Elijah and I and other members of the delegation, our senators, are constantly pressing on our friends on the other side of the aisle to understand the value of investing in the country's infrastructure. You create thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs if you do that, and we'll keep pushing on them. But our ability to make that case in Washington is enhanced immeasurably by being able to turn around and point to the state of Maryland, to Governor O'Malley, to the legislature that has made tough decisions to stand up and be a full partner. So we can, in effect, be shaming some of our colleagues in Washington saying, look, look what the state of Maryland is doing. Look what the communities in Maryland, look what Baltimore City is doing to invest in infrastructure and in the future of the country. Why don't we do that here in Washington? So this has to be a partnership, whether we're talking about the red line or we're talking about these other very important projects. So congratulations to everybody who's made this happen. Let's keep Baltimore marching into the future. Thank you. And next we'll hear from the president of the Greater Baltimore Committee, Don Fry. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. First of all, let me thank, on behalf of the business community, the mayor, the mayor and county executive Allman for their great support during the legislative session. They were with us every step of the way. But I particularly have to recognize the governor and lieutenant governor for their leadership and dedication. This is never an easy issue for things to get done in Annapolis. The business community is not a group that is regularly supportive of taxes, but this is one that we think is critically important because of the need to invest in infrastructure in the state of Maryland. And nobody was stronger on this issue than the governor and lieutenant governor, and they deserve tremendous support from us for all their efforts. Yay! I also have also have to recognize the members of the legislature because, again, it's not an easy vote for them either. Uh, this has not been done in the last 20 years. Uh, the last time that uh, a gas tax was passed, uh, Congressman Cummings and I were in the House of Delegates, and uh, we were two of the votes uh, back at that time for that to occur. So it takes a long time for that to happen. This is a great day for business because Inf investing in infrastructure provides mobility. Nothing is more important for the business than mobility. We have to be able to move people, goods, and services. But it's not just a business issue. As the Congressman mentioned, it's also a quality of life issue. It's a quality of life issue that affects all of our employees, it affects all of our residents of the city and the region, and this is critically important for us moving forward. Uh, we think that the projects that have been identified and funded are tremendous. We are particularly pleased with the red line. Red line does mean business and jobs. It's an issue that we have been working on for many years in support of. of. And, Governor, we're also very pleased to see the investment that you're making in Mark Service 
the expansions, the uh, infrastructure investments you're making there, as well as the expanded weekend service, something I know that the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance has been pushing hard for. We're glad to be a part of their efforts. But we thank you for your vision. A couple of years ago, the, we conducted a, a work called Gaining the Competitive Edge. And in that competitive edge, one of the pillars for economic growth and job creation was a superior and efficient transportation st system that has a, a dedicated transportation funding mechanism. And I think for the first time in a couple of decades, thanks to the work of the people behind me, we finally have that vision of a dedicated transportation system that will serve all of us in the state of Maryland. So again, Governor and Lieutenant Governor, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to turn over to the podium. Uh, again, one of the people who's a great supporter of this effort, and that's the, from Howard County. <laughs> Almost blew it right there. Uh, Ken Allman, the County Executive of Howard County. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Don. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, I'm going to be brief because you all have been standing for a while. And another round of applause for the great young people who are here being patient. And I had a great time talking with you earlier. Who are the kids who were in the uh, Orc Kids with the BSO playing instruments and doing so well in school? And, and all of you, we are so proud of you. Uh, and, and I want to give you another round of applause. I also want to say to... Uh, to our mayor, who I was with just a couple of hours ago down at the Living Classrooms Foundation, talking about uh, joint investment uh, into cleaning up our environment and improving sustainability as a region. Uh, thank you for your leadership and partnership with this entire region. And by the way, who's fired up for the Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens to start their march tomorrow night? Are we going to repeat? All right. Um, look, I want to be very clear. Oh, there's some fan of some other team somewhere in the audience. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Uh, although this will connect you down towards that other team. Uh, the connectivity. Uh, they got a good quarterback, RG3. All right, so um, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be nice to everybody. So look, I, I want to be very clear. From my perspective, we are here because of the leadership of Governor Martin O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown, and the members of the delegation who took very tough votes in Annapolis. This, this, the fact that we're all here, that doesn't happen by accident. It happens because tough decisions were made. And I want to again thank our Governor, Lieutenant Governor, the members of the delegation uh, who are here, who took those tough votes to make sure we could have events where we can invest $1.5 billion into our transportation infrastructure so together we can create jobs and create opportunities for folks. So another round of applause for the Governor, Lieutenant Governor. And I just, I just want you to know from, from a regional perspective, from a Howard County perspective, and also from a Hartford County perspective, if I could say, because Marianne Lasanti from the Hartford County Council is here. There is investment here to help people get in and out of Aberdeen Proving Ground that will support the jobs at Brack and Fort Meade down in Anne Arundel and Howard County. There is investment to Route 29 in Howard County that's very important and sound barriers that protect the quality of life of neighborhoods in Howard County. But the fact that there is investment into the MARC system is something that I am personally incredibly appreciative of because the MARC system is the mass transit system for Howard County. That's how folks in Howard County get to Washington and get to Baltimore. And so the more connectivity we have, the better for opportunities throughout this region. The fact that we're, that we're adding additional lines of service, additional uh, trains uh, to weekday service for the Camden line so that folks can, you know, if you, if you got to stay a little bit extra at work or you got to stay uh, after or that extra schedule helps you get home to be with your kids and help them do their homework. That is important for the quality of life, the things that uh, Congressman Cummings and Congressman Sarbanes talked about. So I am here to say thank you for the tough decisions that were made to put people back to work, create investments in our community. Thank you all very, very much. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.